Good afternoon. My name is Terry Smith, and it is my privilege today to share in CBM calling with a very, very dear friend of mine who I will introduce to you, first of all. But before I do that, I want to tell you that I am in Muskoka. Muskoka is a territory several hours north of the city where I live, which is Toronto. Um, this is where I come and I am renewed because of the beauty of the nature and the earth and the lakes and the rocks around me. Muskoka means in Ojibwe, a place that is hard to turn away from in a time of struggle or battle. And I find that very true for my wife and me as we are um, isolated here in Muskoka. The land that I am on as we have this conversation with uh, Cheryl Bear is the traditional territory of the Anishinaabeg. It's specifically Ojibwe, Chippewa, and Odawa people's territory. This territory was covered by the Williams Treaty of 1923. And I open uh, this conversation, Cheryl, because I want to recognize and express a deep appreciation for the historic connection to this place of our Indigenous peoples, of First Nations, of Métis, of Inuit, and other Indigenous peoples who helped make and shape and strengthen this community around us and um, throughout this land. Cheryl Bear, I am so glad to have this conversation with you. Tell me about the land where you are. Well, I'm, I'm happy to hear you do the land acknowledgement. That always makes me um, happy. I always tell people it's like the first, like a baby step mm. in the journey of reconciliation, like maybe a baby's first step mm. for Canada, but it's, it's, it's good. It always makes me feel good. Um, mm. uh, Cheryl Bear and uh, Sli, Natlehwasten, Damdenyu Sli. My name is Cheryl Bear, and I'm from the beautiful village of Natlehwasten, First Nation, which is located about an hour and a half uh, west of Prince George in British Columbia. Mm. Um, I am uh, not there right now though. I'm um, in a little apartment in a native housing in Vancouver, BC, which is, well, the land now known as Vancouver, BC. This is the traditional territory, the, the unceded territory of the Musqueam, Tsleil-Waututh, and Squamish First Nations. Mm. So. Cheryl, I'm a curious person and I'm really intrigued by that piece of art I see behind you. So can you first say a word about that? I think it has sure. a special meaning to you. Yeah, for sure. My, um, my middle son, Randall, he is uh, just, the, he's always been, since he was little, just uh, been this artist and has done things mm. that have surprised me since he was, he was young. And this is, a, it's a beautiful piece. It's about five feet tall, mm -hmm. and it's called Atsu, which in our language, the Dakat language, it means grandma. And uh, <laughs> he did this for my mom when she was in the hospital, oh. and he was hoping to present it to her when she got better, um, but she didn't. Um, mm -hmm. she, we, we lost her last uh, October, end of October, and so he said, um, this is for you. You're the grandma now. So, mm -hmm. yeah. It's amazing. Cheryl, mm -hmm. Um, what are you hearing from Nadle What What's this situation right now? Uh, how is your, I know you have family there, uh, many, many cousins, as you tell me. Um, mm -hmm. I know your dad is in Prince George. Uh, what, what are you hearing? What, what, what is the pulse of the community? Uh, well, the, um, I've said for myself, uh, I can, uh, I'll tell you my own feelings um i'm just i feel kind of stuck here like i feel like mm. um, i would rather be home hanging out with my dad he's 83 he has copd so i'm mm. worried about him trying to call him every day and uh find out how he's doing um and then also being home uh, my aunties are there my uncle um and a, about a thousand cousins and i always say <laughs> we're native people we have so many cousins and so i always say uh, all my thousand cousins and those are the only ones that, that I know about so there's <laughs> definitely more um, but uh, but having um, been in Vancouver for the past uh, little bit and having um, uh, a son who you know goes downtown and uh, hangs out and this is a hot spot for COVID-19 right now so I feel like the safest place for or this the safest thing for my people and for my dad mm -hmm. is for me to stay here which mm -hmm. is daunting and um <clears throat> it's definitely no fun yeah. but um yeah it's just trying to choose the best thing to do to keep everybody safe 
So, yeah. um, and back home, um, one of my cousins, um, Beverly, one of my favorite cousins, mm -hmm. uh, one of the first things she did was and, uh, and start collecting medicines. Um, mm -hmm. Back in the day, um, I remember uh, uh, different, when I was like, like a, a kid and a teenager as a Christian, I remember people talking about um, indigenous uh, medicines as um, being like, evil and bad and don't do it mm -hmm. and you know stay away and it's dark and all that stuff and um and now you can just go like to the herbal store and yeah. there's all our stuff right and yeah. it's uh, extremely expensive but this is what <laughs> um the natural medicines are what uh, we've always done mm -hmm. and i just got a, i got an email the other day from one of the not like counselors and he had mm -hmm. a quote from his dad uh, this is the uh Counselor uh, John Kitlow Jr. and his his dad Johnny Kitlow Sr. was a friend of mine, a good man, and he he said, and he talks about. I know this is a quote: "Pine needles is boiled and drank, and is good for your if your chest is tight and you can't cough. You can also mix it with balsam." And so mm -hmm. there's some, you know, so they're out there. They're collecting medicines and um, mm -hmm. and distributing them in the community to elders and and so and elders are our priority so that's yeah, I want, so yeah. i was going to ask you that Cheryl, and i'm glad you raised that point about elders because i have been shocked as i think many people have been by um certain things that have been said that show a lack of respect for elders but i i know that within your community and within every first nation community i shouldn't generalize but i can't help it I think that you have an esteem for elders that's very different. And I wonder if you could share a word um, with us about, about your elders and about the respect that is there. Uh -huh. Oh, definitely. Yeah, that is, um, when we talk about Indigenous values, um, uh, there's, they're very different from Canadian values uh, mm -hmm. in some ways. And, uh, and so this, talk about reconciliation it's it's also a learning journey it's for every single canadian it's like a really steep learning curve to mm -hmm. to learn what um kind of what we're even talking about but when we talk about the land that there's so many things in there that we need to to understand before we can even have a conversation uh before yeah. canadians can even have a conversation with indigenous yeah. because yeah. we're talking different a totally different vernacular right mm -hmm. so for elders um, our view of elders is that um, the elders are the most important people in our mm -hmm. community, the most important. And so we have uh, elders gatherings, we have um, events for elders, we have um, language classes where the elders, you know, come out and teach. And we have, um, uh, what is the, oh, um, there's a really great story that I've heard a lot over the years and I've told it a lot over the years and mm -hmm. that is um, when we lose an elder it's like uh, a library has burned down oh. so the oh. idea that all that wisdom they're the wisdom keepers yeah. they're mm -hmm. the um, they're the story keepers they're the ones mm -hmm. that you know language is a key to identity and mm -hmm. the stories are key to identity so these elders are, mm -hmm. are imperative to us and and mm -hmm. not expendable and it feels like and i know of course when we see you know overseas we see um healthcare professionals having to make unbelievable decisions yeah, yeah. you know that kind of stuff when when i see see that it just breaks my heart because it must, yeah. um yeah, if, and I know it breaks their heart as well, but mm -hmm. it feels like mm -hmm. I wish we had enough capacity and infrastructure mm -hmm. here in place already planned out so that we didn't have to make those decisions. Mm -hmm. Because especially for us as Indigenous people, this <clears throat> losing elders is um, uh, is impossible. You really yeah. get this. And, and then of course we, yeah. yeah, we become the next elders and that's another yeah. really impossible thing to, <laughs> another yeah. like, tough challenge that you, everybody has to go through, right? Of course, yeah. Cheryl, do you, um, do you have a sense of uh, the vulnerability of our Indigenous communities in Canada um, presently around COVID-19? I do, you know, as if you're an expert on every Indigenous community in Canada. <laughs> you are! <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, I appreciate the question, though. Um, for, for sure, I can't speak on behalf of every Indigenous person in Canada, um, um, but for myself and for the, the folks that I've talked to, 
um, I didn't talk to all of my cousins, but I, you know, quite a few. And, um, and of course my algorithm on Facebook is all native stuff. So I <laughs> do a lot of the native stories and try to share all of those stories mm -hmm. as well. So I'll do my best. I'll do my best. I am grateful for that. Uh, Keep going. Yeah, the, um, definitely a feeling of, of vulnerability. Um, I was talking with, um, uh, my chief, Larry Newski, and I asked about uh, some of the money that was coming from the government because, you know, you hear these big numbers, you hear like double digit millions and it's like, mm -hmm. oh, wow, that's, that sounds amazing. Like, yeah. thanks for that. And, and, um, and that's going to help. That's going to, you know, take care of everything in my mind because I have no concept of what double digit <laughs> millions yeah. is, right? Like, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, um, so, but in talking with him, uh, it, it was actually... So, of course, you know, that big number has to get split up into all the different over 600 First Nations communities. And uh, and then when, so when it comes right down to it, it's like, you know, 40, 50 something dollars per person is, is what the amount actually works out to, mm -hmm. which is um, not really that helpful at all. That's, mm -hmm. you know, half a bag of groceries in, in some yeah. places, right? Especially isolated communities where things are more mm -hmm. expensive. Yeah. So, um, so in, in that, I, I kind of feel like um, Indigenous people have always been sort of like in the, in the back of the Canadian government's mind. It's just kind of like, an, uh, you know, almost like a mosquito in the tent. It's like always mm. buzzing and you can, mm. you know, it's, <laughs> right? And, it, yeah. and it's sort of like, uh, you know, it's, it's painful to even use that, that analogy yeah. because it's, um, you know, there's so much more, there's so much beauty in Native people and to have um, government officials. And I lost a lot of, I, um, unfortunately, I lost a lot of my hope and, mm. and um, you know, rose-colored glasses when I was uh, mm. served not lay as council, um, a chief in council for um, four years. Yeah. Uh, because dealing with every level of government, it was just, so, you know, it was almost like every meeting they would open up and they would say, okay, first topic on the agenda is business as usual. Mm. And, and they were always... Yeah, it, it was always really tough, and I, I so, um, yeah, yeah. going from being in like the Christian world where you know you're always talking about hope and you're always talking about um, you know the possibility of resurrection and new life and all that mm -hmm. stuff, and and some of that you know is you know we've maybe pushed that a little bit too far and mm -hmm. it's a little less human, but then <laughs> but um, in in politics it was daunting because like that was every single meeting, so yeah, definitely feeling. Uh, vulnerable, definitely feeling like uh, some of the Indigenous people are going to be forgotten because we've always been kind of forgotten throughout mm. history. And I got um, I got a, an email from somebody that was like, <laughs> they said, I'm reading your, you know, Facebook stuff and said, you know, I, I remember when you, you, when we were young and you just seem kind of like you're, you're bitter now. <laughs> I was like, ah, uh, what? And I thought, you know, I guess if I was a man, they'd be saying, she's assertive and smart. I don't know, maybe, but because I'm a female, it just appears like I'm old and bitter. No, um, you need to tell people maybe, what I called. Uh, do, you remember, do you remember what I called you yesterday? I said that you were my favorite Pentecostal prophetess. <laughs> so speak out, gal, go for it. That's right. The Old Testament prophet. That's there you go. Uh, I got the gray hair to prove it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Join yeah. the crowd. Join yeah. the crowd. So Girl, are there, all that, oh, go uh, ahead, go ahead. No, no, I was going to say, I, I, um, I, I think that there are, in the midst of the incredible brokenness and challenges that you're describing, I think that you've seen a couple of signs of hope. Um, and I just wondered if you could say what, what you do see as a sign of hope. Yes, that is, uh, oh, it's so important. Um, uh, that tiny little bit of hope could can just change everything and get mm -hmm. us through, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I think that uh, the things that I've been reading and seeing on um, uh, social media, all the different social media, and then talking to different mm -hmm. people, it's that Mother Earth is kind mm -hmm. of getting to take a deep breath. And, mm -hmm. uh, and there's some rejuvenation going on. There's all of us are paused. You know, I'm supposed to be right now in... Uh, Ecuador, but our trip oh. got canceled. 
next month I'm supposed to be on another trip and that's that's canceled as well and mm -hmm. uh, so there's way less planes flying in the air there's mm -hmm. you know, none of us are the streets are empty downtown yeah. Vancouver mm -hmm. and Russia or in Toronto right it's, yeah. and the streets are empty so this this breath of fresh air is good mm -hmm. um, yeah. it's um, yeah it's mm -hmm. so so there 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 is hope in that and I have um, kind of this sense also from indigenous people that um, one of the reasons that we're in this space and this with this dealing with this pandemic is because we haven't listened to mother mm -hmm. earth or we mm -hmm. you know pushed the boundaries of where we're supposed to be and go and how we're supposed to live um on yeah. this earth yeah. and which also are biblical values of how to mm -hmm. treat the earth and how to care yeah. you know earth keeping yeah. um so uh so there is that hope and but in the midst of all of that like i mm -hmm. um I've just, I don't know, in, in the last bunch of years, I've become, uh, um, I'm trying to become more human. I'm trying to become mm. more authentic. And I, I feel mm. like I always have, but I've always, you know, especially in some situations, we find ourselves sort of having to, you know, um, whatever. Yeah. Sort of like, we, we'll, give, we'll give each other little phrases, like, you know, mm. and, and it's sort of like, okay, you know, sure we can be positive and don't be anxious and all those kind of, um, you know, we have to, we have to live on those biblical principles. Mm -hmm. But I want to also just say that we can't forget that there is a book in the Bible called Lamentations. Mm -hmm. uh, we can't forget yeah. about that. Very human stuff, right? Fear and yeah. um, anger, doubt, revenge. It's all mm -hmm. over the Psalms. Yeah. Yeah. So we're allowed to feel those things yeah. that God allows us. If, if they're in the Bible, they're there for a reason so mm -hmm. can i share with you something that i've been praying that god would do in my life and in my community uh and i um i guess i'll just say it this way uh i find it so easy for us in our in our context to live highly individualistic lives and to only think of ourselves and if I'm experiencing something on a very deep level right now, even in this tiny little setting here in Muskoka where I am, it's that we are made for community. And God is disrupting our individualism right now by reminding us how important community is. And I, I know community is an extremely important value for you, Cheryl. And, uh, and within an indigenous worldview, and I think that this might be a, an area of, of growth for me, for my church, for a lot of our Canadian Baptists uh, across our country. So Cheryl, I want to conclude by asking you a big favor. Um, you are a person who prays for our earth and who prays for healing and you believe in healing. And um, I've been touched by some of the things that I've seen in social media. Um, that remind me of the that deep spirituality that comes through song and story and i wonder if i could ask you to conclude our our conversation with a prayer to creator god um, for healing can i ask you to do that sure i'd be happy to um thank you uh and just um i've been sharing um a lot on facebook at different places um, the jingle dress dancers all across Canada, yeah. the United States mm -hmm. have been, have been um, uh, dancing and, and we call it dance. Every step is a prayer and the jingle dress is a, is a healing dance. Mm -hmm. And um, I've been, I've been really encouraged by those videos and seeing uh, this, this deep faith of our indigenous people to pray for the healing of, mm -hmm. of us and of the land. Yeah. Uh, and those those have been prayers for a long time. Thank you for uh, sharing those. And there was there was an elder just before I close. I have to. This just came to me. There was an elder who told me um, that, uh, and his mom had been um, passed for some sixty years. And she, and he said, uh, he said the prayers of my mother are still being answered today. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that was meaningful to me at the time. Mm -hmm. This was 20 something years ago. Mm -hmm. Meaningful for me because that meant that the prayers of my grandpa, of my, um, all of my ancestors are being, 
are still being answered today. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I hope I can leave that mm -hmm. uh, with you. Um, Thank you. We didn't rehearse this part, so I'm just going to, yeah. Go for it. But uh, this song is uh, just, a, just a chant. It doesn't have any word-for-word um, -word translation. Mm -hmm. uh, but the elders say that the, the chant represents the deepest cry of our heart. And so mm -hmm. this is what we're... Um, Whatever is in your heart, just let it um, let it uh, follow these this chant, and uh, it'll go to the, to the creator. I Cheryl, thank you so much for that song, for that prayer, uh, for your deep belief in God's healing power, uh, for his creation and for this land. Um, thank you, everybody who's joined us uh, for this conversation of CBM Calling. And uh, uh, we continue to uh, be thinking of you, of your churches, and of your communities. Thank you again, Cheryl, for being with us and we look forward to everybody joining us uh, tomorrow afternoon at 2 30 when my colleague Jennifer Lau and I will be answering questions that we've been receiving from you uh, through our Facebook live uh, updates and CBM calling. God bless you Cheryl may God go with you as well in your family uh, during this difficult time.